we begin, I'd like to tell you that this video is number 9 in the Hidden Block Community Advent Calendar and I'd also like to remind you to check out all the videos made for this event, they're all really good, I promise! Now, enjoy the feature presentation! Welcome to the Rochelle Show. Once upon a time in a faraway land, there was a grave and terrible tragedy. The ruler of the kingdom, the Queen of Nova, has met an untimely demise. Now a new ruler must be elected to take the throne. Many people seek to take advantage and steal the throne for themselves. But the Queen's daughter, Princess Elodie, is the one true heir. And she needs guidance from someone who will help her through to her 15th birthday where her coronation will take place. But who is the one who will help her? I'm gonna say the princess! Oh, God help us all. So yeah, this is a thing I decided to pick up. It's called Long Live the Queen. And I've got no idea where this is apart from that. So no more time wasting, let's have a look see. And go. I said go. Go? Now? Well, that don't work! Play. On. Run. Eh? Hmm. Well, that don't work either! Wait a second! So some people, and by some, I mean the developers Hanako Games, call their product a simulation game. Now this has caused some disagreement among players as they see it more like a strategy, role-playing type of shebang. Furthermore, the software they use to create the game, Renpy, is better known as a tool for making visual novel and dating sim type games. And I consider myself to be a complete stranger to all of these game genres. So this game could end up being either one of two things for me. It could be a new, interesting, and enriching experience, opening me up to a whole new genre of games that I'm not normally familiar with. Or it could be the single most boring slash frustrating thing I've ever had the misfortune of setting eyes on. So hold on to your hats. I'm about to review this thing. Well, I, um, I I certainly feel patriotic right now. I have to wonder why they decided to use the British national anthem here, and why it's constantly on loop in the main menu system. I mean, do they not have any other songs to play at this point? Oh, and of course, it has to be a cutesy piano arrangement, because visual novels expect no less. Alrighty, this menu system, what options do I have? Mm, not a lot, it would seem. But then again, it is a rampy game, so I guess we'll let it slide. I also get to look at a checklist of my in-game achievements, the different epilogues I achieve, I guess, and my deaths. Deaths? Wait, what? Deaths? Have you cracked your skull open? Have you taken an arrow to the gut? Have you let your blood run dry? I don't want to do any of that! So the basic storyline goes a little bit like this. You've been taken out of school by the king to go back to the castle where your family resides. Your mother has tragically died, and you, being Princess Elodie and the next in line for the throne, must take various classes to prepare yourself for becoming queen with your coronation taking place in 40 weeks time. To prepare yourself for ruling the kingdom at the ripe young age of 15... By the way, isn't 15 a bit too young to be ruling a kingdom? Anyway, if you're to rule the kingdom, you'll need to take different classes in various disciplines that are apparently relevant to becoming queen. Learn about your country's history, training archery and sword combat, learn about rearing falcons, study divination, military strategies and magic law and do many 
many, many more things. Oh, and also, um, as evidenced by the death checklist in the menus, you'll also be trying to avoid various death scenarios depending on what skills you learn and how much you've learnt in that skill. Survive 40 weeks, and boom. Sounds simple? Well, indeed, the whole concept is, but... How have they gone about with the actual gameplay? Again, the developers of this game claim this to be a simulation game, but really, it's a bit more than that. And agreed, you do sort of simulate Elodie's life as she learns how to be queen, but really this game is more like a micromanagement, role-playing strategy game. I'm just confusing you right now, aren't I? So why don't I detail how you play this game by actually starting one up and then you can make your own assumptions from that. Oh god, yes, please tell me all the things, please! I must know all of the things! So there are three main mechanics that you can look at and alter throughout the story. The first one is obviously your skill tree, which groups together all the disciplines you can learn into four distinct categories. Social, physical, intellectual, and mystical. Each category splits further down into different skill sets, each with three skills to learn. The bar next to each individual skill represents how much you've learnt in that particular area, and each skill set also features a number showing the potential bonus or penalty points that you can earn for a skill in that skill set. These bonuses are calculated and altered by learning skills within the same skill set and by Elodie's mood. The second key mechanic. You have four different mood scales, and whichever one of the eight possible moods has the most points towards it is determined as Elodie's overall mood. To advance through the game, every week you need to pick two different classes for Elodie to study throughout the week. The game states that she will gain two points towards each skill she learns per day for five days, making for a standard ten points without any bonuses or penalties. If there are bonuses attached to that class's skill set, she will obviously earn more points for the chosen skill and vice versa if there are penalties due to Elodie's mood at the time. After you pick the classes for that week and the points are distributed accordingly, a story-driven event will occur. The third key mechanic in this game. Some are straightforward cutscene-like events, but some may prompt you to choose an option to directly impact your progression. And depending on the experience in your skill tree, you will either pass or fail certain event tests that let you know that your progression is altered because you have or have not got enough skill points for that test. These events also may affect your mood scores and may change your overall overall mood come the end of the week. If you make it through the event, you'll then have the option to choose a different activity for you to do over the weekend. These also have a direct impact on your mood scores, and you can see how they will affect these scores by hovering over each activity. Once all that's done, the week ends and a new one begins. Rinse and repeat for 40 weeks or until you die. So how is all of that as an experience? Well, it's kind of hard to give an answer for definite, because in truth, it's all really down to your own patience and how much time you're willing to invest in getting to the end goal. For the most part, the mechanics are easy to get to grips with, but be warned that if you simply rush through the game, you may miss out on very important information regarding your stat changes and what decisions you'll be making. This game really should be played at a steady pace, so you can take in the story progression and therefore know what you're getting into. Doing this should create a nice flowing system for optimal enjoyment, but it can and does however get abruptly halted by these goddamn death scenarios that come seemingly out of nowhere. It's like, oh, you're just playing the game nicely, you're doing well, everything seems peachy, you're gonna go to a birthday party and have some fun and then whap, bandits ambush you, you get an arrow in the back and it kills you. And that's just great. Oh and by the way, this game is actually surprisingly dark, just for the multitudinous ways in which young Elodie can potentially kick the bucket. But nonetheless, when a death like this comes seemingly when you least expect it, it does rustle up a few feathers. And yet, you feel compelled you feel compelled to go back and fix where you went wrong. Like here, I made it to week 28 when those bandits ended me, but I could easily go back and reload my save file. Oh, and for the record, there were like hundreds of spare save slots. And then just choose a different path from the one I just took. And immediately I get put back in this rather quite soothing atmosphere that the game has. The artwork is stunningly beautiful, as to be expected with this game's visual novel style of presentation. Plus, Elodie's design, while a very cliched anime teen girl with outrageous hairstyle sort, deal, again looks really nice, as does her numerous different outfits you can unlock for her by levelling up a skill set to a certain amount. And even the death graphics are pretty neat and somewhat humorous, in a very dark satirical sense, with various chibi style drawings of Elodie's potential demises. 
Yeah, I'm a dark bastard sometimes. But what's not dark is the soundtrack. Almost all of the music pieces in this game are piano arrangements. And while they're very nice compositions on their own, they can become somewhat of a nuisance while you're playing the game. The tracks get constantly put on repeat during play, and with the pieces being as short as they are, they get unbearably repetitive and annoying. I swear I have some of them ingrained into the deepest parts of my memory banks there to stay. Forever. But yeah, in general, it is all down to you as an individual to decide whether this game is right for you. But on the technical side at least, it is all really well constructed given the simple nature of the software used to make it and the surprising amount of thought has gone into making the tiniest of gameplay elements relevant to the story's dynamic progression. You know how many visual novel style games can grant you multiple story arcs and endings depending on what choices you make? That's basically what this game does and I think it does it very solidly mechanics wise. And it uses more elements other than just prompted decisions to create your path through the adventure. The implementation of the skills mechanic for instance is not noticeably pivotal in showing how you fare at the various test scenarios and also hinting as to what skills you may need to look at next. The mood mechanic is also very nicely constructed, although I would have liked a bit more explanation for the various bonuses and penalties that different moods give. Often I ended up like, okay, so if I'm in this mood, it boosts this skill. Yeah, I don't really see the connection, but still, it's really well done. And even details like the outfits you unlock impact your stats and therefore your story progression, for each one offers an increase in experience for a specific skill set. And so thought needs to go into what outfit you'll wear for the coming week because it could be the difference between passing or failing the game's test scenarios and could potentially save your life. And I found all of this seriously intriguing. All of it together makes for a very challenging strategy game. I found myself engrossed in the mechanics, carefully analysing my skills, trying to improve my moods and aiming for the perfect balance. Because I'm a perfectionist like that. While the technical aspect of the story is good, the actual writing didn't impress me all that much. Not to say it's bad, but it's not a groundbreaking story. It's not quite on the level of, say, analog or hate stories narrative if we're looking at similar visual novel type games. Plus it falls into the all too familiar trap of throwing a bad situation at you from out of the blue, completely catching you off guard and potentially causing you to fail the game when it doesn't necessarily feel like your fault. And being the absolute grammar Nazi that I am, I did notice one or two spelling and grammatical mistakes. This is not acceptable! But apart from that, I certainly found Lonely of the Queen to be a neat little trip away from my usual gaming repertoire. But then, there's something else. Something that's nagging me. Something about this game that's taunting me from the very back of my mind. Preventing me from enjoying this game any more than I did. Seven pounds. Seven pounds. Seven pounds. Seven pounds. Seven pounds. <laughs> I paid seven pounds for this. I paid seven freaking pounds for this. Seven pounds on this, excuse me. I'm just gonna go cry in a corner now. I mean, really? Is there really that much awesome stuff in your game? Your small budget, Ren P based, visual novel game to warrant a freaking seven pound price tag? No, cause, cause if I'm honest, there's not. Your art style hasn't won me over despite it looking great, the music isn't completely masterful, and your writing is borderline plain at times. I mean, similar games like Analog Hate Story cost about the same, I admit, but that one's more worthy of that price tag because of its incredibly well-written story. Seriously, Christine Love, great job. And I'm sorry, I just can't say the same here. But while the game doesn't have that in its favour, its mechanics are very well thought out and make this a pretty well put together and cohesive visual novel with the right amount of branching paths and the ability to accommodate various methods of tackling the main objective, such as building up on one skill set to full points or trying for a balancing act between all of the mechanics to progress. It's a fun little thing that you can visit if you want a couple of hours away from your mainstream gaming library, but a £7 price tag is almost impossible for me to justify. Before you even consider forking out money for this, go find Hanako Games' website for a free demo to see if you enjoy it, and then wait for the game to come on the cheap through a Steam sale. That means more money's for use! But I think the upshot of all of this is... I enjoyed the majority of time I spent on this game, but those glaring issues just spoils the overall experience for me. But by no means is Long Live the Queen a bad game. 
So I'm going to give it a score of three princess crowns out of five. <sighs> but I can't really bring myself to put this in either my treasure or trash list. <sighs> Do you know what? I think it's time we add some sort of a middle ground for those games that I feel undecided on or can't really put into either side. So I introduced Long Live the Queen as the first undecided fence warmer. But what do you think? Are your thoughts any firmer than mine? I'd like to know, so please leave your comments below. But until next time, that's it for today. All I can say now is stay you and stay awesome, and I will see you all later on. Right, let's make a queen out of this girl. No, 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 not the chocolates. <laughs> hey, thanks again for watching, you lovely people. Be sure to give a like and a favourite if you enjoyed the video. And if you really liked it and you want more, consider subscribing to The Richardo Show, so you can be among the first to see new content when it's ready. Thanks again, and I will see you guys later on.